train he designed for Walt Disney's Dumbo has a full-size cousin in his own backyard. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Adventures of Kendall. Today's adventure will take us back to the Southern California Rail Museum to check out the Grizzly Flats Railroad Barn. It's going to be a fun time exploring the history of Western railroading through the collection of Disney animator Ward Kimball. And I can't wait to take you there. So let's get going and check out the Grizzly Flats Barn at the Southern California Rail Museum. In our last video about the Southern California Railway Museum, we didn't go over specific artifacts or barns within this complex. So today, we're going to check out the Grizzly Flats Railroad Barn, just over here near the main park area. Inside the barn, we'll learn the fascinating history of narrow gauge railroading in the Western United States, all through the collection of the late Disney animator, Ward Kimball. Born on March 4th, 1914 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Ward Kimball was an animator employed at Walt Disney Animation Studios. He was also part of Walt Disney's main team of animators known collectively as Disney's Nine Old Men. And amongst this group, he was well known as being a big rail fan and an expert when it comes to trains. And when they had a train sequence in a Disney picture, they'd always call on me and say, what kind of a locomotive? And sometimes I would draw the model, like Casey Jr. The story of the Grizzly Flats Railroad began in 1939 in the backyard of Ward and Betty Kimball's San Gabriel, California Orange Grove. The Kimball's purchased the last remaining passenger car from the Southern Pacific's narrow gauge operation through Owens Valley. About the same time, a rail fan friend of the Kimball's suggested they should have a steam locomotive to go with their new 1881 coach. They would soon acquire a steam locomotive from the historic Nevada Central Railroad, which was about to be abandoned. Built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1881 for the Nevada Central Railroad, this locomotive operated between the towns of Battle Mountain and Austin, Nevada for 57 years until the railroad was shut down in 1938. Originally named Sidney Dillon on the Nevada Central Railroad, the number two was the first locomotive to operate on the new Grizzly Flats Railroad. Anyway, Ward and Betty Kimball decided to name their new operation the Grizzly Flats Railroad and Harold as the scenic wonder of the West. Friends and family helped to restore and refurbish locomotive number two to its former glory. It was renamed to Emma Nevada after a famous opera star from the late 1800s. Once restored, the newly christened Emma Nevada will become the flagship of the new Grizzly Flats Railroad. Finally, in 1942, the Grizzly Flats Railroad was in full operation. More track was laid and the Victorian Railroad Depot that was a leftover prop from a Disney movie became the line station. Soon, thousands of curious rail fans from all over the world would visit this famous Southern California landmark, whether it was a special event, or via personal requests, or even a TV crew wanting to tell the story of this unique operation. Even Ward's boss, Walt Disney, would visit the Kembles to ride on the Grizzly Flats Railroad. These visits would be part of the inspiration for the Disneyland Railroad. Meanwhile, the Emma Nevada would continue to operate on the Grizzly Flats Railroad until being sidelined years later due to boiler issues in which the Chloe would take over as the main operating engine of the Grizzly Flats Railroad. Anyway, the Kimmels would continue to operate the Grizzly Flats Railroad for years to come. Sadly, Ward Kimmel will pass away on July 2002 but not before donating Emma and some of the equipment to the Grizzly Flats Barn here at the Southern California Railway Museum for preservation and restoration of the equipment in 1993. Betty and the rest of the Kimball family continued steaming up the original Grizzly Flats Railroad in San Gabriel until summer of 2006, with the rest of the equipment arriving at the museum a year later. Today, the Grizzly Flats Barn is a great place to learn about the history of narrow gauge railroading in the Western United States. The volunteers in here are doing a great job maintaining the equipment in this barn.
currently their biggest project is the second restoration of Grizzly Flats number two, the Emma Nevada. Over here, you'll find neat pictures of the Emma Nevada back when she operated on the Nevada Central Railroad and in the early days of the Grizzly Flats operation. There are other unique artifacts within the barn, including these gauges to check air pressure in the Westinghouse air brake system, and this large diamond sack covering from the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. The Rio Grande installed these stacks on their K28 locomotives to make them look older for their narrow gauge operations between the towns of Durango and Silverton, Colorado. And other narrow gauge equipment, the majority of which come from the Southern Pacific Keeler branch in Owens Valley. This includes passenger car number five the first piece of rolling stock acquired by the Kimballs, and Southern Pacific narrow gauge business car, Esmeralda. However, there are exceptions in this collection, such as Grizzly Flats number one, Chloe. Built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1907, this little locomotive originally operated on the Waimanalo sugar plantation on the Hawaiian island of Oahu. When the Kimballs acquired the locomotive, Ward renamed it from Puka to Chloe after one of his daughters. There's also Pacific Coast Railway Boxcar 704, which was built in 1906. Operating within the Central Coast area of California, the Pacific Coast Railway helped farmers ship their produce from within the San Luis Obispo and Santa Margarita areas. The legacy of the Pacific Coast Railway lives on with the new Pacific Coast Railroad at the historic Santa Margarita Ranch. Check out a previous video I made to learn more about this ranch. And Westside Lumber Company Caboose Number no. 7. This caboose, or crummy, was built by the Westside Lumber Company in 1949. This caboose, along with the others in the fleet, were put at the end of the big log trains as they wind down the Westside Lumber Company's tracks through Tuolumne County. Here's the interior of it. Pretty basic, isn't it? Inside the caboose, the conductor would have the freight orders handed to them, while the brakeman will ride the cupola to watch out for freight cars that might derail on their train as they head down the West Side Lumber Company's tracks. Boy, I had a fun time talking about the Grizzly Flats Railroad Collection here at the Southern California Railway Museum. But we've reached a point where it's the end of the line. So let's head back to the studio. All aboard! If you have a location for us to go on, comment or email down below. We would love to see suggestions. And also subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We would love to see your faces. Now that's all the time we have here on Adventures of Kendall. See you later, folks. I'm your gifts bless the world.